Um, and so, yeah, I'm going to be presenting today on uh, how to prevent our best articles from becoming not our best articles as time passes. Um, and so to start off to um, set us in the mood here, I have the poem Ozymandias uh, by Percy Shelley for any of you who don't know the reference. Um, I won't read the whole thing here, but the uh, standout line from it um, refers to this traveler who comes across uh, this uh, sculpture in the midst of a barren desert and the uh, pedestal says, my name is Ozymandias, king of kings. Look at my works, ye mighty and despair. And nothing beside remains of that. Um, and so it's certainly a lesson on hubris um, and something that as we look at our Wikipedia work, um, I want to pose the question to everyone of what would happen to the content or initiatives that you care about if you were to retire uh, tomorrow? since none of us are going to be on Wikipedia for forever. Um, and uh, I'll get shortly into uh, my personal experience. Um, but my experience looking at a lot of the former featured articles that were considered our best ones in the 2000s, uh, a very large portion of those either have no longer um, been able to retain the featured article status or are in the process of being delisted because they no longer meet our standards. Um, and so the particular article that I'm going to use as case study here is the featured article of mine that um, I wrote most of um, and took through the process um, on Pomona College. And I started working on this around 2020. Uh, and back then uh, there were these, I think 16 or so uh, featured articles on different colleges. Um, would anyone like to take a guess on how, how many of those survived about a year later? And shout them out. <laughs> yeah, not too far off. Um, it was four by that time um, because pretty much universally what had happened is that an editor had put these through the featured article process at some point, but there's so much information that needs to be updated every year. Uh, the students count uh, the financial figures, all this information that's relevant, institutions constantly changing. And as someone retired, uh, these articles were just left to drift. And what I've uh, observed is that the sort of default inertia for featured articles is to decline over time uh, because a lot of editors make edits inadvertently that mess things up um, or that make the article worse. And there's no one around to catch that. Um, and I think that's a really big concern for us because uh, we want Wikipedia to be around in the long term. We want the trend to be up because the farther into the long term you look, uh, the more important it is to have that upward mobility. Um, also add all four of these articles um, after November, 2021, uh, they were also delisted. So now Pomona is the only uh, college that has a featured article. So we are not going in the right direction um, in this topic area. And it's similar for many other types of featured articles that need uh, common maintenance. So let's look at what happens. And I'll propose uh, three sort of causes here. First is changing standards. So the featured article process today, for any of you who have been through it, looks nothing like what it did in the 2000s. Um, Wikipedia has matured a lot and there is much more stringent rules, uh, much more stringent expectations. Uh, the second is the articles themselves have changed uh, just because people will add new images. Uh, people will come in who have different ideas about what it should be. And then the third is changing facts. The institution itself changes, the topic itself changes. Um, and uh, right now, there since 2020, there's been this process called the Unreviewed Featured Articles Review. Um, and of the ones it's considered, it's looking at all of the old featured articles, uh, the ones that have gone through that evaluation so far, nearly two thirds of them have ended up being delisted. So I'm going to go now into various steps that I think that we can take uh, when we are writing content now in the present 
uh, and we want our content to persist over time to not get worse. Uh, what are things we can do so that even independent of ourselves, even after we retire, other editors will be less likely to make deleterious edits. Uh, the topic itself will evolve in a positive direction. Um, so uh, the first is to use hidden text comments and edit notices, uh, which you know, appear in the edit window as you're editing to warn against tempting but undesirable edits. A good way to uh, identify these is to look at edits that are commonly made to an article and that need to be repeatedly reverted. Um, and I'll put a bunch of examples here uh, from Pomona's article. Um, I try to keep these concise enough to not trigger banner blindness, but still useful. Um, so the first one here is talking about uh, not having citations in the lead, which is something that even many intermediate level editors are not aware of. Uh, this is the sort of thing if once edit check is implemented, uh, we will hopefully be able to warn people as they're trying to add citations to the lead saying this is not the area where you need to do so. Um, but for now, it needs to be an edit notice. Um, this is a potentially commonly misinterpreted fact uh, where uh, like Pomona had protests and arrests like many colleges. Um, and I used the number 19 here because those were number of students directly arrested for the thing I list in the article. Um, but a lot of media talks about 20. Um, and yeah, there's some potential confusion there. So I want to make sure that no one gets confused by that and changes the number. Um, there's a big tendency towards recentism in any history section. Uh, people take the latest controversy and add three paragraphs on it that's wildly out of proportion with the ultimate historical relevance of an event. Uh, we want to discourage that. Um, on another end, uh, colleges love to talk about their sustainability initiatives among many other things, and that can be overrepresented, is overrepresented in a lot of college articles. So I put this hitting comment um, that you see in the edit window after the sustainability section saying, please do not expand this. Mm -hmm. um, even just uh, basic uh, things, this is a paragraph where I talk about the academic buildings on campus, and I wanted to, to forecast my thoughts to anyone changing it, uh, saying, this is the paragraph where I intend to talk about this subject. Um, photo galleries, notorious for accruing too many images. Uh, people take a new photo, they see there's a gallery, they want to add their photo to it. Um, so I want to discourage that. Um, some controversial elements, uh, there's been a lot of discussion among the Higher Education Wiki Project about characterizing the overall reputation of a school, uh, saying it's an elite college or whatnot. Um, so this is a hidden comment pointing to that discussion. Um, repeated information. So there's a question of where do you put the SAT scores? Is it in the student section, in the admission section? Um, I made a choice about that and put this hidden comment saying you don't want to add a duplicate of this information because you just are looking for it somewhere else. Um, yeah, this is another one colleges like to talk about their entering class, which will have a higher SAT score. Um, sorry, their admitted class, which will have a higher SAT score than the students who are admitted who actually chose to enroll, uh, but to students who chose to enroll is what's actually relevant. Um, alumni lists, another area with tons of craft. Um, you know, people like to add way too many famous alumni. Um, and then at the bottom, this is a pretty minor thing. This is just uh, with the navigational boxes. Um, there's a bunch of different consortia that all have their navigation box. This was the choice I made about uh, how to order them, and I want that to stay consistent. So all of these things, um, yeah, they give people insights into what I was thinking as I was writing the article, what established best practices are, um, and you know, I even use some of them for future improvements I'd like to make to the article. And I hope that they're helpful for other editors who are editing it. Um, and yeah. Uh, Moving on to a different step, um, clearly establishing the article's style of English. Uh, if you've never used the two templates here, uh, the style of dates, so whether the day comes before the month or after, um, you definitely want to start. Uh, also, uh, the style of English. But there's also a lot of room for improvement as a movement here. Um, things like more detailed style choices 
whether the article uses Oxford commas or not. That's something that's either only in my head right now or would require a really close reading of the article to discern. And if we could introduce templates for some of these things, introduce standards for them, uh, especially as AI is getting better and uh, bots can start to uh, correct more of these things automatically, I think it'll be very helpful to have these standards documented as thoroughly as possible, uh, since what we don't want is inconsistency um, because that goes against the manual style and is just less pleasing for readers. Um, transclusion. Uh, this is something that comes from the fact that at a basic level, the amount of difficulty to maintain content depends on how much content there is relevant to how many editors there are maintaining it. And when content's going to be the same between two different pages, uh, there's no need for us to write it out twice. Um, there's the principle of don't repeat yourself in software engineering. Um, this is the same thing here, where it makes it easier to maintain things over time, uh, ensures that updates are synced to the page. And so stuff is less likely to go out of date um, when you have that. So I have an example sentence here um, about a most part of a consortium that all shares a library. And uh, this all looks like just normal text, but uh, this highlighted portion here is actually a small excerpt from the consortium page because the information about the library is going to be the same for all the colleges that share it. And so I wanna have that piece of information centralized so that when updates are made about it, they get pushed out everywhere. Um, and then this theme of, you know, there's complicated stuff going on under the surface, but to the reader, it all looks exactly the same and that's the way it should be. Um, let's see, uh, documenting templates, another complex pieces of code thoroughly. Um, this is a screenshot of the uh, university info box, which I did a lot of work on as part of writing the featured article um, because I wanted to be sure that when I was, for instance, listing out the academic affiliations, um, I had ideas about what was appropriate to list and what was not appropriate to list. And the template documentation was the place that I discussed with other editors and formalized uh, the, this idea that you know you really only want an essential affiliation, not every consortium that a college is part of, to be listed in the info box because it's right up there at the top with important information. Um, we unfortunately don't have template data working well enough to do the link there yet, uh, but that is a separate topic. Um, using full citations rather than bare URLs. Um, I won't spend long on this since both uh, Internet Archive Bot does a fantastic job of it for anyone who saw Mark's presentation. Um, but yeah, certainly having complete citations prevents uh, your article from deteriorating because people can no longer access your references. Uh, page protection. Uh, it's important for a page's development to have it be protected at an appropriate level. And this can go either too low or too high. Um, if there's not enough protection, then you start getting vandalism, you get deterioration from that. If there's too high of a level of protection, then people who might know of an update about the topic and want to update it don't have the ability to do so. And most of them are not going to bother submitting an edit request. Um, so the changes will just not get made and the article will go out of date. Um, ensuring that sectioning reflects due weight. Uh, this is something uh, that I think a lot of editors don't always realize that when you add a section, even if it's only a sentence, even if it's supposed to be only a sentence, uh, others will see that this section exists and feel a temptation to fill it out. Um, and uh, this is something that I see time and time again. It's the reason that I support having the empty section tag and sort of having these placeholder sections uh, because every time I've added one of those, I'll check back on the article a few months later and someone will have gone and filled out the section. Whereas if the section does not exist, uh, it often just does not occur to people that there ought to be content in that area. Um, one big risk factor here, criticism or controversy sections, which we discourage by policy, uh, they are incredibly big craft magnets uh, for all sorts of stuff that's happened recently that no one will care about in 10 years, uh, um, news coverage rather than encyclopedic coverage. Uh, if you can at all avoid it, you do not want a criticism or controversy section in your article. 
Um, this is just the list of sections um, for the Pomona article. Um, you can see in some cases, I've merged a few things that you know had to be a bit of an awkward fit, um, like finances, cost, and financial aid are all together, research, study abroad, and professional developments all together. And that's because I didn't want small sections that would tempt people to fill them out. Um, there's also no giant sections. Um, goes the other way as well. Um, using summary style. Uh, so we want articles to be not too detailed, since then there's, again, same as with the transclusions earlier, there, if there's too much to maintain, people won't have the resources necessary to maintain it. Um, and then this is especially important for to topics that evolve. You know, if you're, you're writing about Cleopatra, um, you know, you're probably fine doing spinoff articles. And if you can write it, it'll be that way for perpetuity. Um, but when additional maintenance is me needed over time, we don't want to have these niche articles that are even more susceptible to degrading over time uh, because they tend to get less page views than the main article. Um, and this applies uh, a lot of folks who see having topics they care about survive deletion nominations, AFDs, as a kind of badge of honor. But uh, uh, if you don't think that something is sufficiently broad to be able to be maintained over time, even without your individual uh, presence, then you probably want to upmerge it uh, to a broader article. Uh, so some examples here uh, for subtopics in the Pomona area. Um, this is one red link, History of Pomona College. I decided there just was not enough information there, um, enough editorial capacity for it to be worth doing a spinoff article there. Um, same with the campus of college. Uh, one that does exist uh, is the list of Pomona College people. This is alumni and faculty. And I think this is an instance of how having a sub article can relieve some pressure on the main article um, because people all the time want to be listing alumni and this having this list provides a place for them to do that where it won't then bloat the main article. Um, another one that does exist is the traditions article. Um, and I decided to keep that partly just for fun, but also because there's a lot of energy, a lot of editorial interest in the kind of popular culture area. Um, and so there's going to be more editors that will be willing to maintain that than if I were to create a sub article on one of the more boring parts of the article, you know, like the college's governance, say. Um, all right, so uh, adding incoming links, redirects, and categories. Um, this doesn't apply so much. You know, I don't think anyone's going to accidentally create a second article on Pomona, but for more niche topics, um, for people uh, who might go by several names, uh, often having that redirect is what lets someone know the article exists um, and not to create a duplicate of it. Um, and then it can also help. Uh, this is what the redirect from the campus page looks like right now. And uh, as I mentioned, there's no article currently on the campus, uh, but I have it appropriately tagged uh, from an avoided double redirect, which basically means um, if there is an article on the campus created at some point, it'll be at campus of Pomona College rather than Pomona College campus. Um, and if it is created, this will automatically be turned into a redirect to that article. So I've sort of set up in advance um, if someone at some point decides, okay, the campus article, we now need it. There's now enough information on it. Maybe there's a new book on it, something like that. Um, I have this set up ready to go. Um, and then, uh, yeah, the project and template spaces. There's so many templates that I can never find that I really ought to be able to because no one's created redirects to them. Uh, same thing in the project space. There's so many redundant essays. I wish we would merge some of them. Uh, but at the very least, when you're writing an essay, create some redirects to it from other terms that someone might search, and that'll bring more people to your essay and, and not have them go and create their own separate essay. And again, more people who come to it, that's someone else maintaining uh, the essay, and it'll get better over time rather than just uh, collecting dust. Um, and then here we have avoiding obscure and dated templates. Um, and so there are two maps here. Um, the one on the left is of Pomona's campus. Um, the one on the right 
is using the location map template rather than the map frame template. Um, the location map template is a much older one. Um, you've probably seen it in a lot of articles and you can still use it, it still exists, but you really shouldn't um, because map frame is the more modern uh, tool, it's more capable. Um, and crucially for our purposes of deterioration, it's the one that's going to be maintained into the future as more and more people switch to it. Um, and so you don't want to be stuck with a template that you know is gathering dust and will need to be replaced at some point, um, since it's not going to have that maintenance. Um, and then uh, relatedly, uh, some editors add no bots to their articles because they are doing something funky and a bot comes by at some point and messes it up. Uh, you never want to do that because bots are important to maintenance. Um, and if the bot's doing something funky on your article, you always want to resolve that with the bot operator or figure out if you're doing something wrong, um, since otherwise you're missing out on that. Um, okay, so going back to the three big obstacles here. Um, first, with changing standards, um, first of all, I think this is no longer as big an issue as it once was because Wikipedia has matured a lot over the past decade or two, um, and our we have a lot of standards, and things will definitely continue to evolve into the future. Um, you know, Mariana pointed us to some of those in the Friday keynote, um, but on the whole, my prediction is that featured article nominations uh, a decade from now will not be as different from today as today is from a decade ago. Um, and in any case, things changing in the future, we so by definition, don't know exactly what that's going to be, so we can't prepare for it. Um, the fact that articles change as editors come in and make edits to them uh, for their reasons, uh, that's sort of what we've been talking about mostly here. Uh, there's the ways to dissuade bad edits uh, with hidden text comments and such. Um, but then the third one was really the one that uh, was killing a lot of the old university articles that were delisted. Um, and that's changing facts on the ground. Uh, you know, information, data that needs to be updated, new events that have happened. Um, and so we need to find a way to make it easy to update when there's changing facts. And that's what I'll talk about for the rest here. Um, so there's sort of three levels to this. Uh, the first easy one is just avoiding language that's likely to become outdated. Um, this is also in the manual style. Uh, you don't want to be saying recently, you don't want to be saying currently, you don't want to be saying so far or soon. All those are words that no one knows when they were added to an article, uh, and they'll very quickly go out of date. Um, level two is using some templates. Uh, and, and so there's a bunch of instances of as of uh, in Pomona's article. So I that produces text saying, you know, as of 2024, this piece of information. Um, and it puts things into a category so that you can see when it, uh, information starts to become dated. Um, there's also update after, which adds a tag automatically uh, after a certain period. If you know that data is going to come out next year, uh, you can use this to say, okay, if I have not updated it by 12 months from now, it's certainly going to be out of date and it should have this maintenance tag saying that it needs to be updated. Um, and then even templates like inflation, uh, you don't want to be saying, you know, something that was $10,000 in 1930 is however many dollars in 2024. You want to be using the inflation tag, which calculates it automatically, and that'll then give us the conversion in 2025, 2026, and so on. Um, and then level three is migrating information to Wikipedia. Um, where it can be more easily updated via bulk. Um, just one moment. And so um, for university data, uh, to use the example here, um, every year there's lots of information that comes out in databases. It's the IPEDS database for higher education, which includes all the things we want to update, basically. It includes the student's count. It includes the endowment changes, um, all of that. But it's very tedious to take all that information and look it up and enter it into Wikipedia. And you know, if I'm not doing that for the Pomona article, chances are there's no one who cares enough to do that. Um, and so that's why I turned to Wikidata 
uh, and basically had a lot of this information uh, scored on Wikidata and then drawn from there in the article. And what this means is that when someone takes a big batch import of iPads data for, for a future year and adds that to Wikidata, it'll then be updated and reflected automatically in the article. Um, and so I'll talk about how that's going so far. Uh, the first is the good, uh, which is the way it displays here. Um, this is a reference uh, to a sentence on the endowment that uh, looks completely normal. It's the same as any other reference. Um, and you would not know that this came from Wikidata uh, unless you looked under the surface. Uh, moving to the bad, uh, this is what it looks like on Wikidata, where Wikidata interface can certainly use some reforms. Um, it's not intuitive for newcomers. Um, and then the ugly, finally, this is what the uh, actual call looks like within the article. Uh, requires lots of code. Uh, I get confused by it. Um, I'm not even going to get into how it looks on Visual Editor, which is even worse. Um, so we really need to make some improvements to the templates here to make this usable for people. Um, so why use Wikidata? Um, I think part of it is that it's future facing. I have faith that Wikidata will be getting better and that its interface problems and vandalism problems and such will be solved at some point. Um, and when that happens, I want the article to be ready. And then the second thing that makes it worth it is this, which is a, a graph that's on a chart that's on the talk page. And this is update tracking. And so because I'm using all these values from Wikidata, um, every single one of these uh, is populated automatically and automatically tells me whether th that piece of information is out of date or not. So it makes it very easy when I go back every few months to try and update things. All I need to do is look at this, see if it's up to date or not, um, and go from there. Um, so yeah, concluding, uh, Wikipedia, it's a long-term endeavor. Um, we want our contributions to stick around. Um, that, that's the way they'll benefit readers. Um, and I hope that as you all go about editing your featured articles, your non-featured articles, uh, whatever it is, that you'll have these considerations in mind uh, to keep your content looking good well into the future. And I have a, a short minute for questions. Um, the essay there, uh, Build Content to Endure, is where I report a lot of this stuff. Um, and uh, this is the link if you want to uh, join the unreviewed featured articles uh, review process and then my talk page. So thank you all. Okay. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, so uh, do folks want me to repeat the question? Yeah, uh, and so the question was about uh, default protections for featured articles. And I agree very much. Um, if you're a newcomer coming in, you know, those of you who know the rest of my Wikipedia work, I care a lot about inviting newcomers to edit. I do not think a good place to do that is featured articles, uh, not the today's featured article. Um, because so much work has already gone into them, the chances of a newcomer identifying something that uh, needs to be fixed is much lower. Um, and so, yeah, I don't know if that translates into a stronger default protection, um, but yeah, it's certainly it's not where I go to invite newcomers. Yeah, uh, yeah okay. Lowering barriers for or for not even for 
article, page five article, word article, etc. Because we we were focusing on the two months on quality and now we're seeing this drop off and that people can get their articles to to the quality on. Yeah, I'd say I think having high standards for featured articles is a good and necessary thing because that's basically the point of what featured articles are. They're the very top designation uh, in quality. Um, there's only 5,000 of them out of the 6 million articles on Wikipedia. And we really need them to be in tip top shape because they are used as models for all sorts of other articles. Um, and, you know, we, we need those models to establish our best practices. Um, and, and yeah, I do think we wanna be inviting more people to try their hand at creating featured articles. Um, it was a really enjoyable process to go through the featured article candidacy. I learned a lot about all these different areas of Wikipedia because you know you have to dive into each realm. You know, when you're adding images, you need to learn how to add alt text because you know the image editors care about having alt text in featured articles, things like that. Um, so yeah, I think there's a good conversation about how we can get more people writing featured articles, but I don't think that lowering standards can be part of that. Then, uh, I mean, yeah. I don't think the standards is high, but I mean, some people might feel that the standard is too high. So are we at that point that our standards are too high for these articles? Um, I mean, there there can be nitpicking uh, that happens in the featured article candidacy. So um, yeah, I think, that that's a good debate to be having. Um, yeah, other questions? I'm also happy to like chat uh, more individually. Yeah, Roy. Yeah, so, so I'm pretty new to uh, all future articles saying I tried to before so that you can see this. Um, I certainly agree that there's a lot of good things. Mm -hmm. um, well, one of the things that I have certainly noticed as a lot of that they use that in general, uh, my writing has gotten better. I mean, mm -hmm. I just like every time I write something, I sort of have in the back of my mind, well, you know, at some point it's going to end up at a day, so let me make it right now instead of, you know, making it up for everything else. All right. Uh, anyone else? Yes, in back. Yeah, um, I mean, in most cases, they were nowhere near featured article quality by the time they got delisted um, and had not been that way for many years. Uh, yeah, basically, there's just a shortage of people reviewing featured articles. They are not regularly checked to make sure that they've been maintaining their standard. Um, and even at unreviewed featured articles, um, if you look at their statistics, they're taking on a truly gargantuan task and they started in 2020, they've only gone through 10%, 20%, something in that ballpark of all of the old featured articles that they're trying to review. Um, and yeah, it's a big problem because, um, you know, when we, again, like when we're using these as our models, when we're presenting them to readers as our best work, we need to know that they actually are. And so many of the old ones uh, right now are not. But yeah. Uh, was there a hand over this way? Yes. <laughs> Canadian still welcome. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's a good question. Um, I think the my personal philosophy on featured articles is that everything should have the potential to become featured. 
um, you know, ultimately, like, we'll obviously never get there, but Wikipedia would be complete if we had 100% featured articles. Um, and in that sense, yeah, I think it's important to have examples, both of, like, dead people who are featured, um, that also topics that change more rapidly. And I think certainly colleges being a rapidly evolving topic is part of a reason why Pomona is the only one currently. Um, but yeah, I do think uh, if some of the things I'm talking about in this presentation were, you know, including a lot of the technical things that require infrastructure changes like edit check, um, I think if those are all implemented, we could have a lot more articles on evolving topics that um, go to featured status. And it also gets to the point of um, why we have uh, policies about not being news. Uh, if there's information that's changing not on a yearly level like it is for a college, but you know on a daily level, um, then editors need to start having discussions about uh, is this information something that, that like YouTube uh, subscriber counts would be an example. You know those change daily. We could theoretically be updating them daily, uh, but do we want to use a more rounded figure? Um, there's steps you can take to try and slow down the rate at which information changes which may make articles more compatible uh, over the long term. I even did some of that in Pomona's article. So like for one ranking, um, the, you know, I think Pomona was fluctuating every year and I got tired of updating it. So instead I just said in the top 10 um, and left it at that. Um, and it's a little more vague, but it'll be more persistent and less likely to be out of date. Uh, yeah, in the back. There's one online question here that I want to make sure I take. Um, it says, uh, I believe that sometimes people are dissuaded from maintaining featured articles, especially vital FAs, because they're afraid of messing up those articles. And I think that sort of mentality can contribute to people just not improving FAs and leading them to deteriorate. What do you think is a good solution to this problem? Um, I would say that, uh, yeah, being bold is something we always need to encourage more of. Um, and that applies both for like someone making their very first edit, but also in the case that uh, this user is talking about where someone might be starting to get to the level where they feel comfortable editing an FA and we should be encouraging them to take that step. Um, like I mentioned earlier, there is much more of a risk of messing something up on any given edit for a featured article. It's just a harder task to be editing featured articles. Um, but yeah, uh, encouragement always helps. And yeah. Uh, I'm curious if if you have a feature article, is it good if the curation actually increases on the feature article status? Mm -hmm. Or is the curation uh, actually slows down? Specifically, uh, I noticed for instance, sometimes we have feature articles about certain animals that uh till that point they haven't been edited since almost since they were created. Specifically, that's all interesting. Yeah, yeah uh, I'll finish this question and then wrap up. They'll be edited 30 over a period of time to expand a week. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, so I would say um, there's influences on both ends there. Um, when something's featured article, there's more people paying attention to it. Um, just people who pay attention to the featured article process and they can catch some things that others would not. Uh, on the other end, uh, featured articles tend to be longer. They shouldn't necessarily be, but they tend to be. Um, and that means there's more information to maintain, more risk of stuff going out of date. Um, and so, yeah, I see uh, influences on both ends. 
and for the duration or the um yeah if i had to choose i would say yeah they tend to deteriorate faster when they're featured but also it's just a lot more noticeable um, when something's perfect it's easier to see the cracks forming than a c-class article where I see most of those the brand new edits where they haven't edited for years and there's two months of just heavy editing and then slowing down. Um, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, going to wrap up. Uh, well, thank you uh, online and everyone who stuck it out for the Q&A. Uh, appreciate it and always happy to chat more about this.